Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we are back with another heated topic today. Two days back, I had made that video where I said that uh, if you are planning to get married, then before you do compatibility matching, uh, you must take care of certain factors astrologically. I mentioned six or seven factors there, including your own horoscope. And today, in this video, uh, after I made that video, uh, somebody had mailed me and uh, that person asked me that that person is wanting to get married, but the person is not sure if that person should get married to whichever person uh, or married in general. So the person told me to uh, give a checklist or make a video on this topic that how to know if we are actually ready to get married or we are just living in some dream world because it takes a lot of work and effort to maintain a marriage so therefore long time back we had a seminar on this topic and uh, there were six points which were shared in that and today i would be sharing those six points and there are many other points of course uh, which if you are already married and you are watching this video you can also write it down and uh, these six points are primarily true for any uh, society or any marriage. <coughs> and this will be true for uh, both the genders, all right, male and female. This is irrespective of the gender. And as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your marriage or career or health, then you can go to the website down in the description section. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. So before I start speaking, uh, there's a disclaimer here. There are many strong things which I will say in this video, which you may not like. So therefore, if you watch this video, you may feel that oh, he's thinking too much. <laughs> all right. And uh, you need to bear that. All right. So... The first question that you should ask yourself, this is huge, this is big, this is the number one, this will always be number one. Imagining or considering a scenario, you are planning to get married to somebody or you already know or whatever. The first question is, you have to ask, am I happy currently? Am I happy being single? Yes, you must ask this question to yourself. because. If you are happy when you are single, you will also be happy when you are married. Should I repeat? If you are unhappy when you are single, then you will also be unhappy when you are married. Or even if you get into a relationship, it doesn't uh, change it. So many times people think that um, what is marriage or what are relationships basically? You are bored and you have a filthy, boring, empty, disgusting lifestyle. You don't have a good schedule. You don't eat good food. You, you don't hang out with good people. You have, you have a terrible lifestyle basically. You are miserable. You are you're empty inside. You are very hollow. There's no substance inside you. So you think that uh, there's this one magical person who will descend in some heavenly chariot and then that person will come and change your life. All right? So I wish that happened in the, maybe that happens in the heavenly planets or in some dreamland. But the fact of life is that when you get married, what happens exactly? Whatever you have in your life, you share that with somebody else. So by that definition, if you are unhappy, you are miserable, you are crying, you are cribbing, you are, you are not happy basically, then that same happiness gets transfer to the other person and then that other person ends up becoming more unhappy than he or she was when he or she was not with you all right so basically we are ruining somebody's life if we are getting married without uh, and then we have this expectation that no no actually the problem is you know i don't have that person just that's the problem you know so whenever that person comes to my life then everything will suddenly change no it doesn't work like that now, of course, that is a given fact of life that the level of closeness and happiness and intimacy which you can feel with uh, your uh, husband or wife that you cannot feel with your uh, any, any other human relationship, that, that's true. Uh, but at the same time, 
that relationship cannot act as a replacement for any other area of your life okay it cannot act as a replacement for some void which you have so if if you feel that you have a void in your life currently now which, whichever area that is if you think that you are getting married to compensate that area then then you are then you are heading in for for a disaster but if you feel that you are reasonably happy happy doesn't mean you are always on clouds or you are always like ha, laughing giggling jumping no that's not happiness that's excitement basically there's a big difference between uh, being excited and being happy so if you are always uh, if you are reasonably happy yeah, there will be ups and downs you will not be happy 24 hours that's okay that's perfectly fine but if there's prolonged sadness and you are only complaining about things in life you are you are blaming god all the time you are blaming your mother you are blaming your father you are blaming your boss you are blaming your friends you are blaming the government you are blaming the prime minister or the president or the universe and you think that just by somebody's entry in your life everything will change no 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 it doesn't happen you are heading in for a disaster all right so then don't marry don't ruin somebody's life you should only marry if you are reasonably happy with your life and you want to share your happiness with other the significant other and also thereby uh, enjoy by seeing that person's happiness also otherwise you will see uh, you will end up destroying that person's life okay and even if that person doesn't divorce you or stays with you but that person won't will never be happy okay due, due to religious or uh, so, social circumstances that person may stay with you for for the whole life or for some time but then no and that's the fun, fun that's the funny thing that's the interesting thing if you are unhappy and you are trying to find fill some void in your life and if you get married then what happens not only that person will become unhappy but you will become more unhappier than you were before getting married yes that's that's goal so don't think that only that person will become unhappy you will become more unhappier okay so don't ruin somebody's life you can ruin your life that's not a problem of course if i would be sarcastic here but at least don't ruin somebody else's some other person's life okay because that person has the right to be happy so don't go on finding replacements for don't don't think that some joker will come and keep exciting you 24 hours okay and you'll just keep laughing all the time and your life will pass like that all right so that is the first thing and this is most crucial now the second thing do you have realistic expectations about your future spouse or about your married life all right realistic expectations okay so here i will give some examples uh, once there was a man who came to me and he said that uh, he was searching a girl uh, somewhere from north india and uh, he was searching a girl from last 11 years and he's in his late 30s now and he's unable to get married so then he came to me for a consultation and then i asked this person okay sir i see so what is the problem how is it that for 11 years you are searching somebody you are but but yet you are not able to find he said uh, actually you know no, nobody is matching up to the expectations uh, that i have i said okay so what are your expectations then uh, he said in hindi of course so let me say it in hindi and then i'll translate it in english he said वो लड़की बहुत खूबसूरत होनी चाहिए सुंदर होनी चाहिए सुबह सुबह उसको ना वो नहा दो के उसको आके मेरा पाँव चुना चाहिए ना फिर सिंदूर लगाना चाहिए फिर मेरे लिए खाना बनाना चाहिए फिर ना उसको उसको नाचना आना चाहिए गाना आना चाहिए उसको ना मेहमानों को खाना खिलाना आना चाहिए उसको थोड़ा बहुत स्मार्ट होनी चाहिए बोलना आना चाहिए उसको अच्छे से थोड़ा बहुत ऑफिस जाके पैसा भी कमाए बच्चे को भी संभाले मेरे माँ को भी संभाले मेरे पापा को पापा को भी संभाले मेरे भाई का भी ध्यान रखे मेरे बहन का भी ध्यान रखे मेरा घर संभाले ये करे वो करे तो बेसिकली वॉज टेलिंग दैट दिस द गर्ल विच इज फाइंडिंग शुड लुक वेरी गुड एंड शी शुड टच हिज फीट एवरी डे मॉर्निंग आफ्टर शी आफ्टर ही गेट्स अप 
and uh, she should be able to cook she should be able to paint dance sing and he take care of his parents and uh, have a reasonable job get some income you know, take care of the home and uh, basically he wants uh, he, he wants a fancy girl actually which doesn't exist so then i told him that uh, well yes you can find a girl like this uh, well uh, in the scriptures it is said goddess lakshmi she is uh, sarva guna sampanna which means she is the emblem she is the epitome of all the divine feminine qualities which you can find uh, which you can only find in her and then he said oh okay okay so so it's there only in lakshmi devi so then i said lekin ek problem hai ki tu narayan nahi hai so i said that the problem is you are not lord vishnu you are not narayan so Lakshmi will only stay with Narayan, so you can only uh, claim or demand to uh, you can have this demand to have somebody like Goddess Lakshmi, provided you are somebody like Lord Vishnu, uh, or you are somebody like Lord Ram, or you are somebody like Krishna. All right, uh, if you are short uh, of them, then these personalities, then maybe it's not very realistic. and similarly i also had met a lady she was telling me you know, that she is also not unable to find somebody i said why why are not able to find well i want a husband who is uh, who is who is very rich who is from a affluent family doesn't speak lies doesn't cheat knows to cook also okay that is another criteria she had then is very handsome then uh, and is rich also and then is very intelligent very smart very flamboyant and very dedicated uh, and ha- and knows to take a lot of responsibilities and is very focused on maintaining his bodily fitness and at the same time very emotional very compassionate very loving very giving so so then i said all these qualities that you want is there yes it is there in one person who is that yes it is there in lord vishnu himself all right so now lord vishnu has to descend in on one human form and then you will go and put the garland yes so there is no man like that or there is no woman like that all right your expectations will be will not be fulfilled 90% of the times yes you must compromise in some area or the other you cannot have best of everything in this material world because Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, "Dukhalayam ashashvatam," which means this material world is a place of misery. So, therefore, you will get some 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 of your expectations will be fulfilled in some area, and most of them will not not be fulfilled. Okay, sometimes people say, some of your expectations will not be fulfilled. No, it's not like that. Some of your expectations will be fulfilled, and most of them will not be fulfilled. All right, so. therefore uh, you have to ask this to yourself am i being realistic when i am uh, searching for uh, a spouse or even marriage you know how will be uh, my married life be so if you think that you are not realistic then uh, you really need to check if you are again going back to the same point why 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 do you have such high expectations maybe you are trying to fill some void which you have in your life okay or your ego is so much puffed up and you are somewhere in in the clouds and you think that you deserve somebody like god or somebody like vishnu or somebody like lakshmi yes so you won't get that because you also have four flaws and you also have faults so come to the ground admit the fact that you have flaws okay now that doesn't mean you uh, settle with somebody who you don't like or uh, who is below your standard i'm not saying that but to expect perfection in everything it doesn't work like that all right so you will ruin your life if you are uh, finding these kind of uh, partners or if you're expecting these things from marriage no it doesn't work like that all right so this question you need to ask yourself so what is the next question ah number 3 this is short and sweet <laughs> but this is the most heavy why Number three is you have to ask yourself: Am I ready to put in the amount of effort which is required to maintain a relationship? Because it takes a hell lot of effort to maintain. <laughs> you can ask this question to your father or your mother. So you can ask them how much it had taken to maintain the marriage. 
there are many times when you will feel that you can't stay together get out or i will get out of this just get lost you will fight you will quarrel you will want to beat each other you will want to kill each other sometimes you will be so angry you will be so frustrated that your expectations were not met and even then do you uh, do you do you have the strength to continue the marriage okay even if your expectations are not fulfilled so if you feel that uh, you are not ready to put in the amount of effort that it requires because because the relationships are like uh, trees as they say and they are like fruits basically so what happens when you have a mango seed uh, first you have to put the seed then it will germinate then you have to put water then sun sunlight will come you know you have to keep nurturing you have to keep watering then when you keep watering 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 then uh, after days months or maybe years the tree will grow and then you will see the mangoes there and then you can enjoy the mangoes but if you expect that even without putting any water or doing anything you will just sit and you will sit like a king or a queen and that person will come and you know pay homage or pay obeisances unto you and will be serving you all the time well uh, or giving you roses all the time <laughs> then it will not happen because that it doesn't work like that all right so you have to understand that if you have expectations then that person also has expectations and that person is marrying you because he want he or she wants to fulfill their expectations so this is something which you have to understand that when you are getting into marriage then you you must take care of the expectations of the other party otherwise they won't stay with you for very long all right so you need to ask yourself am i having that am i can can i give basically or just or do i just want to take okay because if you don't give in relationships then you won't get anything back okay so you need to ask yourself that am i ready to put in the amount of effort and many times you will put efforts you will feel you are doing 90% and that the other person is not even doing 5% 10% or maybe the other person is doing zero or maybe even the other person is blasting back on to you okay so you have to ask yourself am i ready to put in that effort which is required yes or no if yes then go ahead only then you will get the mangoes otherwise if you just wish that today you plant the seed and tomorrow there are mangoes wow you are, you are heading in for a royal collision all right so don't do that and ask this question to yourself what is the next question number 4 yes do i have forgiveness tolerance and patience this this is gold these three qualities these are the most essential qualities within a married life okay uh first quality is forgiveness can i forgive people or do i always like to pull pull others down do i like to insult others do i like to prove everybody that how they are inferior and how i am the best you know there's this song i am the best i am the best i am the best so if that is your uh, attitude your ego if your ego is like that balloon then one day uh, pook the balloon will blast <laughs> all right so do you have that much compassion in your because see your partner will do mistakes they will not fulfill your expectations sometimes or most of the time so then you have to you have to be ready to forgive them because if you keep holding grudges all the time that person he did like this she did like this you know i will prove it i will prove her you know, that you did like this 10 years back you said this 5 years back you said this yesterday you said like this and today also you are saying like this if you are saying like this all the time then you won't be happy okay you you have to understand that everybody has flaws and weaknesses and therefore sometimes you might have to forgive people and then do you have that level of tolerance because relationships need a lot of tolerance there will be so many things about that other person which you will absolutely hate which you will not like there will be things which you will like but there will be so many things which you will not like so therefore you must ask yourself do i have that much tolerance that can you tolerate people in general around you how do you feel when somebody is irritating you or somebody is doing something uh, which you think is not 
which is very stupid so then do you go and blast on that person or you know do you start gossiping or what do you do so the way you behave with others the way the similar way you'll behave with your spouse okay then patience do you have patience because many in initially when you are uh, getting married then you will see you are doing so many things but the other person may not reciprocate so do you have that inner substance and patience to wait and still continue that relationships all right these three qualities are very 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 crucial so you must ask yourself do you have these three qualities number 5 can i accept people for who they are yes can i accept people for who they are or do i always want to keep changing people yes this is this is fancy yes i will change him i will change her trust me long story cut short it doesn't work you cannot change see you can improve a person i am not saying you cannot improve somebody but you cannot change the basic inherent nature of a person so for example if somebody is very talkative you you cannot you cannot change the person's nature by doing something and uh, make him or her less talkative you can't do that if somebody is very uh, silent you cannot force for a long period of time to uh, make that person you know speak too much or become talkative or speak loudly you can't do that this is just an example because uh you 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 have to understand that everybody is most comfortable in their own nature swabhava as they say okay so now many many times they may have bad habits which you might uh have to help them and they, then you might uh, work together and they might come out of the bad habits like addictions they may have that's different but in general every person has a fixed nature you know it's like the it's like what they are made of so that that you cannot change so you have to ask this question to yourself when you deal with your family members or friends uh, can you let people be themselves or all the time you are like a boss and you are going on commanding hey this is not like this you should not do this you should be like this you should be like that you should be like this if that is how you behave then don't uh, then then don't marry because that person will is not your slave that person is not your a uh, servant or your uh, that person is not not like a mobile you press you know on and then it gets on you press off it gets off no it's not like that that person is also a human being just like you that person will have likes and dislikes so uh, if you are hell bent on changing others and you do not you cannot give freedom to others to be who they want then you are heading in for a disaster and if you can give freedom then yes your married life will be very good then last but not the least number 6 and this is actually number 0 which means it is above number 1 also do you have a spiritual goal spiritual path in life yes if yes then very good you can get married and you will have a good marriage but if you don't then even if your karma supports good marriage you will be miserable at the end of the day why because generally uh, materialistic people or people in general they get married why because they want they want to enjoy with members of the opposite sex they want emotional sense enjoyment they want physical sense enjoyment yes these are the two primary reasons physical and emotional enjoyment basically yes and you could say to some extent some stability but this material world is made in such a way that if you depend too much beyond what you should on material objects then you will you will get frustrated okay and especially uh, the pleasure of sexuality i would like to highlight here because many times people they uh, they decide partners on the basis of their appearance or their personality because they feel that their sex life will be very great if they marry this person well uh, therefore uh, since this is the last point i would like to highlight a shloka from the bhagavad gita this is the third chapter this is a uh, 39th verse can you see this here yes this shloka this shloka if you can see okay so what is this shloka this is 3.39 this shloka says avritam gyanam etena gyanino nitya vairina 
काम रूपेण कौंते दुष्पुरेण अनलेन च द ट्रांसलेशन इज दस द वाइज लिविंग एंटिटीज प्योर कॉन्शियसनेस बिकम्स कवर्ड बाय हिज इटर्नल एनिमी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ लस्ट which is never satisfied and burns like fire dushpurena analena cha that is the word burns like fire so the purport is very interesting here instead of me speaking maybe i should read the purport amazing it's one of the best purports it is said in the manusmriti that lust cannot be satisfied by any amount of sense enjoyment now when i say lust here it doesn't mean uh, the gross act of sexuality it means roaming uh, to parks roaming to some beautiful places with your spouse or i mean beyond what is required all right or just just, just uh, laughing giggling smiling you know, or everything anything any kind of enjoyment that you have with the opposite sex that is actually lust that is that is actually a part of sex desire only because that sex desire manifests as uh, these things all right lust cannot be satisfied by any amount of sense enjoyment just as fire it never extingu it is never extinguished by constant supply of fuel and yes food and all this is also considered under this only all right so going to restaurants eating and just enjoying having a good time in the material world the center of all activities is sex and thus this material world is called maithunya agar maithunya agar or shackles of sex life in the ordinary prison house criminals are kept within bars similarly the criminals who are disobedient to the laws of the lord are shackled by sex life advancement of material civilization on the basis of sense gratification means increasing the duration of material existence of a living entity therefore this lust is the symbol of ignorance by which the living entity is kept within the material world while one enjoys sense gratification it may be that there is some feeling of happiness but actually that so called feeling of happiness is the ultimate enemy of the sense enjoyer why do i say this because nowadays people they do not have any spiritual goals in life okay their only goal is to just enjoy with their spouse and then take a uh, world tours to paris to berlin to los angeles las vegas sometimes even to the taj mahal agra india or nowadays these new spots are coming you know thailand singapore and all these places then they will go and eat meat there they will drink wine they will see the beautiful places they will dance and they will click photos and they will upload it to facebook this is what their life is it is it is basically animal life that's the life of the dogs and cats basically because there's no focus on uh, spirituality right so therefore uh this this is very important this is regarding to sexuality uh, e- even regarding sexuality once my guru was telling that uh the pleasure of sex is is uh, organized in such a way that if you use it for recreation rather than procreation then you will be miserable you will be frustrated see it's just like uh, eating the what the purpose of eating is that you uh, maintain your health and you be happy but if you eat whatever you want anything anywhere anytime it will end up making you miserable right so that's how sex is so if you exploit the pleasure of sexuality beyond a certain extent then you will end up being miserable so you you should ask yourself do you have any spiritual goals in your life are you interested to elevate your consciousness spiritually well if you are not then there are two possibilities either one possibility is you have a very bad karmic marriage okay I mean suppose by your horoscope or your destiny or married life is not good then then you are anyways frustrated but suppose your married life is very good by your karma then even then you are frustrated because the soul anandamaya bhyasa as the vedanta sutra says the soul is searching for eternal pleasure unlimited bliss which it cannot find in all these petty things like food sexuality or you know world tours or drinking wine or 
any other sort of material enjoyment it cannot find beyond a certain extent it is not possible so you you are you are actually heading in for a disaster if you are not marrying with an attitude of uh, making some spiritual progress in your life okay so therefore you should also choose a spouse which who is uh, inclined spiritually or who is already doing doing a lot of spiritual practices otherwise very soon or the other your married life will end up in a lot of boredom and what is the symptom symptom of this you you will just keep sitting in uh, couches and watching tv all day all all night that is what you will do and you will be just wasting your life like animals all right so don't ruin your life and some other person's life also so if you are in a situation that you are wanting to get married then it's very essential that you cultivate spiritual knowledge first and develop spiritual practices in your life only then you should get married otherwise your uh, your marriage will become very boring it will become very monotonous and very soon you will start looking towards members of the opposite sex from uh, i mean outside okay so you look at some other person's wife other person's husband and you will try to maybe get them into your life because now you're bored with this person and that is why extra marital affairs are rampant in kaliwa it's like going like fire why because they are bored with one spouse and they want some new spice new romance new love new sex new sexual pleasures which uh, doesn't exist actually uh, but you think you will get it if you change the person so therefore uh, you have to understand that uh, the, these pleasures are limited by the dint of your karma so whatever is there in your karma you cannot change it by just uh, hopping like dogs from one person to the other it can't happen all right so if if you don't understand these things and then you just get married just just like that because your friends are telling getting married or your parents are telling you or you think you should get married again to fill up some void in your life then it will not work in the long run all right so thank you very much and if you also know other points then you can also write it down in the comments and uh, if you want a consultation from me regarding your married life then you can always go down to the description section and you can also subscribe to my channel and you can also share this video with somebody who is wondering if they should get married all right thank you very much god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him